Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Okay, you know what I used is a, some stamp, a stamp set that I had, and it says memories on there, so I just used some clear embossing uh, powder and kind of did what I did on the other side, uh, on the Christmas side with the Merry Christmas. I'm going to use it to put on top of the frame. Um, here I'm just kind of still looking again on what it is that I want, um, what I want on the layout, basically. So I'm just kind of putting things on here and there and looking for the color because... Um, I'm trying to think of what color to use on the tag itself um, to bring out the stamped word there memories. So um, I kind of created a little swatch by my, you know, with with some uh, white cardstock, and I'm using rusty hinge there. Kind of, I'm leaning more towards that because it looks like the colors would go a lot better, and it would be a color that would pop, and it actually does. It looks great. You'll see at the end here, and um, I'll show you how I apply it. Kind of, well, actually, I did it the same way as I did the other one. And that green is so close to the green on the acorn too. It's just, it's pretty. So this is what I do. <laughs> kind of comparing colors. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a rusty hinge. I went with that one. Um, so I'm just applying it, and um, I soak it completely and I do a double layer like I did the other one. If you haven't seen the Christmas side, um, you should take a peek at that because um, this looks really really nice and I like to use the clear embossing powder. That's like the emboss resist is what they call because it, it'll resist the inks that you put down uh, but the tea dye behind it um, completely show, shines through so it's just it's a beautiful effect and technique. I really like that and I think I got that from Jennifer McGuire or Tim Holtz, one of the two. <clears throat> So here I'm using my Mod Podge on the tag. Um, actually, I just uh, I needed to do six of them. So five fit on one tag, one large tag, and then the the one by itself fit on this one. So I'm just going to use that same one for the one that's by itself. So I'll just uh, adhere it just like that. And I will end up running it through my Sys my Sizzix Big Shot um, to press it out to get all the bubbles out and stuff. So once they dry, I did cut them out. And I wanted to keep it a kind of a close cut. Um, similar still to the other one, but I think I did a closer cut with this one. And this has just a nice um, look to it. It has like a little floral thing above the M and the, all the, the swirls and stuff on top of the word memories. It's just a really beautiful stamp. I think it's from... I'll have to put the shopping list down on, on the bottom of the in the description box too so you guys know where I got the stamp or who, who it's by. So here I'm just cutting the chipboard. Again, I'm doing my 3D... Um, my dimensional with my chipboard. My chipboard dimensionals, I guess. So I'm going to cut them out in pieces and I'll double layer it again because I'll sit it behind the word. Um, so I'm just checking to make sure that it's not too wide and it's not going to uh, show through. So I use my matte accents a lot and this model's lasted me quite a while. Um, I, use it, I use it in this project a lot along with my hot glue. So see how it's dimensioned like that? You can go back and pause it if you want to. So I just squirt it all on and put the second piece on there and then I glue it onto um, the back side of, of my little uh, title. Worked out well for me. I really liked it. And uh, yeah, I was giving space there. I didn't want it to be too close to the bottom part or too close to the top part. So I did that with all of them. And uh, once I did that, I uh, used the same matte accent glue and stuck it onto the very top part of the frame. And the yellowness, the tea dye in the background or under the me the word memories looks really great with the frame. So I like that, that it popped like that. So this is what I did. I made these little sprays, these little bundles myself. Um, with the little ribbon there. Um, so I just used these berries. I just kind of looked for the a bundle and pulled it off. Um, Actually, the bottom one was, um, after I cut the wire down, um, the bottom one came off. But I still I just reattached it um, with the hot glue. So what I do is I kind of lay it flat so I know where the center would be. And then I could just glue that um, on top of the, the bundle of sticks. And this was a last minute thought. Um, I would have, if I would have known this is what I was going to do, I would have stuck the berries um, in with the stems or the little twigs. Uh, and then tied all of it, all. I mean, just all of it together. So it was just a last minute thing. But to hide the twine, I used uh, just pieces of this ribbon that I got at my Hobby Lobby. I don't know, did I put the, 
the video up? I don't remember if I put it up yet. I'll have to post that. My trip to Hobby Lobby, if I can find the video. Um, it was half off, guys. It was a nice, nice, awesome store. So hopefully you guys can get one in your area if you don't have one already. So I just cut a piece there and attached it to the very front. And then I just kind of belted it around. Kind of like a, a band. <laughs> And it worked perfectly for this project um, with uh, all the golds and the oranges and stuff. The brown just went really well with it. So what I did is I grabbed some more of the ribbon and um, I just tied a little, like a knot, kind of like what you know, to simulate the bow. So I cut that and um, I wanted to do a little fanciness on the edges there or on the ends. And I cut that little inside V. I had a little bit of problems because it's so um, has there's a lot of fibers in the little in the center part the velvety part of the ribbon. <laughs> so I did it on both sides, and it was hard with the little ruffles on there to get them to not be all tucked in. So I just used my hot glue gun again, and adhered it with that. It came out um, just fine. I, I really I was pleased with it. I wasn't. Um, you know, pulling anything off to use something else, it's it just fit to me. So I thought when I bought the that ribbon that I, I may end up using it for this uh, particular project because uh, I liked it so much and I didn't know how to incorporate it. But um, I figured it out. So here I'm like, um, the berries kind of look too plain. I still wanted to add just something else that was fall themed. So what I did is I pulled about, um, I pulled out several of these in, in different shades. I wanted to just create um, just, you know, different shade, shades of it. So I have, um, right here I have three of them. Uh-oh, Charlie's at the door again. So I used three on those, and I ended up adding another one later. Sorry, guys, I'm just kind of opening the door for her. Hi, Charlie. So I what I did here is, like, um, I wanted to not melt the leaves but I didn't want to like sit and wait for the glue to dry if I used like the matte accents or the glossy accents so I actually did hot glue gun on the twig itself and it gave time for it to cool, to cool down but still sticky enough and hot enough where it will um, the leaf will still adhere to it so that's what I did see so there's like one dark orange one with orange and brown and a yellower one Charlie's trying to get in my chair. Sorry for the background noise, you guys. So I feel like it was complete, and uh, later on I did add another one, but I didn't show that I did. Um, but there is about four leaves on each bundle. So you see how the kind of gold kind of pop, or the uh, rusty hinge color on the title pops? I, I like the way it's coming out, so I always kind of, like I was saying, I, I do that every now and again back and forth. So I'm going to use some of this bundle sage, um, kind of stay consistent with the colors that I'm already using. And these are uh, some smaller tea dye tags that has some, some beautiful staining on there. I distressed the edges and um, I used some of the green to kind of show, like, kind of glow around this tag. Um, and I cut out with, not cut out, but I used my, my one inch punch and I punched out a lot of these little circles for the tabs for these tags because these are the actual mats that I created for um, to go inside the frame. And I do stamp the back side uh, with a ledger stamp that I have. But I love the staining of it and you can see the difference with the green there and the brown afterwards. Um, so I did add in, I believe it was frayed burlap on this one. So I use it on uh, both. I did the green first, and then I did the brown after. And I don't know why I did both sides. I was just realizing that. I'm like, well, maybe I thought I was going to use just one of them. So um, it will look the same on both sides, looking at it from the front and the back. So I just kind of spread it there. And But see the stain from the tea? It's just, it's beautiful. I love, I love tea dyeing. There's a second piece, and that was basically to so that you couldn't see the back side of the circle, so I wanted to create the same thing on both sides. So it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's balanced out to me. 
so I use a frayed burlap stamp, and um, I just took the the stamp out of the package and set it down because it still has it's still sitting on the plastic. It's a cling stamp. Um, did the frayed burlap and applied it onto the stamp, and then I just uh, put the journaling or not well the tag back there and just pressed it and got the stamp to stamp on it. Here's all the pieces together and that I'm going to use, and um, you'll see them move around because I'm like n not sure what to put on next and if I was going to use every piece or not. So here what I did with the geraniums, um, I pulled single ones off and I put them onto, on top of another geranium on the little stem. And I used some of the glue to kind of hold them together so they're not spinning around everywhere, um, alternating the petals. And so now I'm going to adhere down the frame. And it just needs, I mean, the, the contact point is right on the dimensionals, so that's where I put the glue. And it's going to be a kind of centered um, off to the onto the right side, and um, the spray will go. It is going to end up there because that's kind of where I've been eyeballing it. There's a piece of twig that's sticking out, so I just kind of broke it off. So I'm going to apply. Um, what I end up doing is I, I I have to really look where the twigs are touching, so I know where to apply the hot glue. Otherwise, it's not going to touch. So I have to make sure that whatever twigs are touching the the the, the back or the actual matte part, the shape part, um, that that's where I'm applying that glue, um, so it'll stay. So of course, I do do it on right on the back side of the ribbon there, and um, on the twigs where it's touching. So that contact point, um, I can just press the glue, uh, press the twigs down, and it'll stick because it's on the contact points. I'm loving how this is coming out, you guys. Um, so I did a, a, I didn't do a haul, but I did buy some I'm Roses flowers, and this um, beautiful rose was something that I wanted to put on there. I mean, it's not fall themed, but it was. I just wanted to incorporate this flower because it's just, it's beautiful. So I end up uh, doing the uh, hot, putting hot glue here on the back side of this fabric leaf, and um, wanted to just use it as an embellishment. So I just stuck it on the side there of the frame and um, I just cut the wire off and bent it down um, on the rose and it's gonna go right on the bottom corner of that frame sorry I was a little out of view there and the geraniums I was like you know I really wanna just uh, bundle things up on the by the twig there or the twig the spray so having the little stem still on there, um, still be careful because it was it got so soft I thought the little stem was going to fall off because the hot glue was so hot. So I just stuck it in between the twigs and um, it's on the base on the bottom part the glue is on the flower so um, I just pressed them in there and the two, I, I didn't know if I was going to use two or three little sets but the two was perfect so I liked how that came out. So here goes the little acorns. Um, thinking of placement, I liked how it looked next to the rose, and I end up just uh, putting the glue right onto the acorn and just setting it there. And it set really quick. And um, I was like, where should I put this one? And yeah, it worked just perfectly fine on the other side. So to me, it, it looked fine. And I was thinking, I was like, should I? Should I? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I like it there. <laughs> so. Um, I did it backwards here, and uh, but it worked the same way. I added glue um, onto the actual uh, mat shape, and then I just set the pumpkin on top of it. And I, I don't know why I did it like that, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I think it just looks so cute because they're just tiny little miniature um, pumpkins and stuff. So here is all of them done. I'm just putting the the mats, the journaling uh, mat, or mats in behind the frames and that's it that's all I did and I hope you guys liked it. if you guys have any questions let me know I was excited I'm like yay <laughs> that I finished them so yeah thanks you guys for joining me I really appreciate having you over you guys have a great Christmas and a happy new year I'll see you guys later Jill signing out bye guys